I want to teach you a brand new word today. The word is misandry. Misandry. It's spelled M-I-S-A-N-D-R-Y. I would venture that no one knows what that word is. You've never heard it, never heard it used in a sentence, and you're clueless. Well, that's why I'm here to serve. You've heard the word misogyny. That means hatred towards women. And of course, if you tune into the news, you know that Donald Trump is, of course, the king of the misogynists. Well, misandry is, ready for this, hatred toward men. You say, what? Uh, where's that at? Well, believe it or not, there may be a war on women, but there's also been a war on men for a long, long time. I remember actually many, many years ago, decades actually, really being hurt by a comment by Betty Friedan. She's a famous feminist person. And she said that women in suburbs were living in comfortable concentration camps guarded by the SS, meaning the men. And man, that hurt. I mean, what a sweeping condemnation of men. And if you read books or watch, you know, TV shows, men are you know ridiculed quite a bit, but it's perfectly okay. There was actually a guy who wrote a book and then had a t-shirt company that every t-shirt slammed men of all things, but the title of his book was Boys Are Dumb, Throw Rocks At Them. Seriously. And he had that on a t-shirt, sold zillions, and one of my favorite t-shirts he did was men, oh no, what do you call men with half a brain? Gifted. <laughs> Funny, right? Well, men have certainly earned a bad reputation. I mean, look back at the 20th century, all the bad people, bad characters, you know, from Hitler to Osama bin Laden. Yeah, they're men. Go to the uh, post office, look at the FBI top 10 list. Uh, there's, no f there's no past Girl Scouts there, my friends. You know, most murders are committed by men. All the mass murderers, of course, men. And actually, one thing you don't hear much, uh, being a conservative, I'm against abortion as most conservatives are. We just believe those fetuses are an actual baby life. But one thing you don't hear is the, the fact that, I don't know if you know this, but in uh, biology, a woman can't have a baby without some other person being involved in that activity. It's called a man. And I am I believe we could save more lives if more men would be men and stand up and protect those women and babies and promise to support them. If they did run away like cowards, probably save a lot of lives right there. So men, you know, we got our issues. But let me tell you this. Yeah, we commit 90% of the murders in this country, but most men never harm a flea. A lot of pedophiles out there go to your police office. You'll see pictures of men all over the place that are, you know, convicted sexual predators. But let me tell you, vast majority of men don't belong there. And I could go on and on. And so the abuse that comes the way of men and the comments that are made that we laugh at, guess what? They can actually hurt. Now to my question, you're saying, where did that question come from? Should men be join ISIS or become a woman? What are you talking about? This is it. Promise you, Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton would have more respect for a man who was trying to become a woman than a man who was just trying to be a real man. Guarantee you. And on the ISIS side, let me tell you, as much as Barack says, well, you know, Donald Trump is the big recruiting tool, he's not. Let me tell you the biggest propaganda you'll find among ISIS. They'll show pictures of dead women and children in Syria that they say, of course, were blown to bits by our droning, our bombs. And they'll say to young Muslim men, you join us, we will train you, we'll teach you, we'll give you opportunity to fight and kill this evil empire. And you'll have that great responsibility as a Muslim man in protecting these women and children of Allah. Now, friend, if you don't believe that resonates, you're dumber than a guy, okay? You know, the word chivalry, we, we don't hear anymore. And it comes from the medieval times. Uh, it was referred to knights, actually. These were men, patriotic men, who were given the task of protecting the women and children in their, of course, communities. We kind of lost that today. I'm going to end with an exciting thing, though. In our military, just recently you may have heard this, the military approved uh, and made legal now that women can serve on the front lines. So women can be the first ones to die in war. Yay! I wasn't happy about that. And it's not that women are not capable. They're not better shots, smarter, stronger. It has nothing to do with that. It goes back to the roles. Well, anyway, the excited part comes from me when just days after that, not a lot of women were signing up to go to the front lines. And it wasn't because they were cowards, just because they respected the role of men and their own role. In my home, we celebrated that. You know, I was raised on a farm. My mom never bailed or never moved a single bell of hay, never fed a cow, never milked a cow, never plowed a field. 
On the other hand, my brothers and I never baked a meal. We never washed a shirt. As I look back on it, the roles were very clear. We even made fun of each other, but we celebrated those roles. But as I look back on that, you know what? Gosh, that was a healthy family environment. It really was. So we're in this election season. It does play a part. So when you hear about the war on women, don't forget the war on men. And also, do me this favor. When you hear the word misogyny, so throw in there and say, hey, do you know what misandry is? See where it goes from there.